Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Stannis here presenting to you Saxon Lesson 19, which is about factors and prime numbers. So please have your notes in front of you and a pencil, and we will get started now talking about factors. So recall all the way back from Lesson 2 that a factor is one of the numbers that you multiply to form a product. So remember, factories make products. So in the multiplication equation, 2 times 3 equals 6, 2 and 3 are factors because they are what's multiplied to make the product of 6. In this multiplication equation, 1 times 6 equals 6, what are the factors? Hopefully you are writing down 1 and 6. Those are the factors that make the product of 6. So here we got the product of 6 with 2 and 3 as factors, and here we got it with 1 and 6 as factors. So we see that 1, 2, 3, and 6 are factors of 6. Notice that when we divide 6 by 1 or 2 or 3 or 6, the resulting quotient has no remainder. Um, that is, it has a remainder of 0. So we say that 6 is divisible by 1, 2, 3, and 6. This leads us to another definition of the word factor. So here it is in the bold box. The factors of a given number are the whole numbers that divide the given number without a remainder. So, for example, 4 is not a factor of 6, because if we did 6 divided by 4, we get a remainder. So we would get 1 and 2 fourths, or 1 and a half. So 4 isn't a factor of 6, but all these numbers here, 1, 2, 3, and 6, you can divide 6 by any of those numbers and you will not get a remainder, and that's a definition of a factor. Okay, so we can illustrate the factors of 6. Um, so for those of you visual learners, we can arrange 6 tiles to form different shaped rectangles. With 6 tiles, we can make a 1 by 6 rectangle over here on the left, and we can make a 2 by 3 rectangle over here on the right. This is a way of showing the factors of 6 because when we get an area, the area of a rectangle, we do length times width. So for this rectangle on the left, the area is 1 times 6. And for this rectangle on the right, the area is 2 times 3. So that's, that's a way of illustrating factors by showing area of a rectangle. Now, true or false, ladies and gentlemen, a number can never have a factor that is greater than itself. So I want you to think about that, and I want you to circle true or false. Remember, use pencil so you can erase. And now let's think it over. So the factors of 6 were 1, 2, 3, and 6. Are any of those numbers greater than 6? No, some of the 6 is equal to 6, but none of them are greater than 6. Now, how could you make the product of 6 if you had a number that was greater than 6 as one of the factors? So, for example, 8 is greater than 6. Can you get 6 as a product starting with a factor of 8? Not unless you're multiplying by a fraction, but we're talking whole numbers. So no, you can never have a factor greater than yourself. So the answer is true. So good job if you pick true. Okay, example one, what are the factors of 10? So basically what we want to do is list the factor pairs, the, the numbers that we multiply together to make to 10. Um, there's several ways to do this. Some people use a t-chart, so I'll show you that way. So 10 I believe this is how we do it, those of you that do. I'm not, I don't use this way, but I think this is what they do. So we do one times 10, we could do two times five. Can we do three times anything? No, can we do four times anything? Whoops, way more erase than I wanted to erase. <laughs> no, we can't do four times anything. Could we do five times something? Yeah, two. So that's a complete set. So the factors of 10 are one, two, five, and 10. And we usually list them separated with commas and in order from least to greatest. Now, 1 and 10, a number will always have itself as a factor and it will always have 1 as a factor. So make sure you always remember that. Okay, example 2. How many different whole numbers, so again we're just dealing with whole numbers, how many different whole numbers are factors of 12? Well, I could just answer this by saying how many there are, but I want to list them because we're practicing for this lesson. So we're going to list them using what I call the rainbow method. So this is another way of doing factors. So I'm going to start with 1 and 12, and I'm going to space them apart. So 1 times 12 is 12. Now, 
I put a comma, and I go to 2. Since 12 is even, I know I could do 2 times something to get to 12, and that's 2 times 6. Now I go to 3. Can I do 3 times something, think it through? Yes, I can do 3 times 4. Now, my next number after 3 is 4. So I've completed the cycle. There's no other factor. So if we connect them, that's why this is called the rainbow method. We have all the factor pairs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 are factors of 12. So how many factors are there? There are six factors of 12. Notice again, 1 and 12 are factors of 12. So it'll always have 1 and itself as a factor. Every number will. Okay, example three. Draw tiles to illustrate the factors of 18. How many different shapes of rectangles can you make? So let's try it now. Feel free to pause the video. Um, the first one, which is the most annoying one, is the long skinny one. Or you could say it's a tall one. It really doesn't matter if it's horizontal or vertical. So this is a 1 by 18. So I'm just going to fill in 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so this is a 1 by 18. That's definitely the most annoying one to do. Now, different shapes means that it can't look like this. Even if this was standing straight up, that doesn't count as a different one. So we have a 1 by 18. Now we probably can make one that has 2 as the width because 18 is an even number. So if we do 2 as the width, the length, hopefully you know, is 9. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so a 2 by 9. What about 3? Can we have 3 as the width? The answer is yes, because 18 is divisible by 3. Sorry that this is so sloppy. I can only do so good with my uh, little plug-in marker here. So we have 3 times 6. 3, 4, 5, 6. So a 3 times 6, that also would equal 18. Now is 18 divisible by 4? Hmm. No. Is it divisible by 5? No. Is it divisible by 6? Yes. And I used it already, so I know the cycle is complete. So how many different shapes of rectangles? We can make 3 different shapes of rectangles. Okay, so that's our answer. We have a 1 by 18, we have a 2 by 9, and a 3 by 6. And those are all factors of 18. Okay, now let's move on to prime numbers. So here, we list the first 10 counting numbers and their factors. Which of the numbers have exactly two factors, meaning no more than two, no less than two? So let's look and circle them. So 1 doesn't have two factors. 2 does. 3 does, 4 doesn't, 5 does, 6 doesn't, 7 does, 8, 9, and 10, none of them, none of the other ones do. Okay, so 2, 3, 5, and 7 have exactly two factors. Numbers with exactly two factors are called prime numbers. So that's the definition you can fill in. Prime numbers are counting numbers, meaning they're whole numbers, that have exactly two factors. And can you fill in what the two factors are for every prime number? See if you can. The two factors are 1, and the other factor is itself, the number itself. So you could have itself and 1. You could have these reversed. It really doesn't matter. It could be either order. But 1 and itself. So now let's look at what's behind the screen here. True or false? The number 1 is a prime number. So I want you to think it over. The answer to this, well, first we have to ask ourselves, does the number 1 have exactly two factors, 1 and itself? Okay, well, how can I make a product of 1? I believe the only way to do it is 1 times 1. So does the number 1 have two factors? No. It has 1 as a factor, and it has itself as a factor, but those happen to be the same thing. 1 and itself are the same number. So false. 1 is not prime because it only has one factor. 1 is the only factor of 1. Okay, what about 0? Is 0 a prime number? So now think about it. Does 0 only have two factors? 1 and 0. Well, let's see. 1 times 0 is 0. 
But zero has a lot more factors. In fact, zero has an infinite number of factors because anything times zero is zero according to that zero property of multiplication. So for example, let's pick a random number. Pick your own random number. I'm going to choose 81. 81 times zero is zero. So that means 81 is a factor of zero. And so is 2,946. That's also a factor of zero because it can make zero as a product. So zero has infinite factors. Therefore, it doesn't fit the definition of prime because a prime number only has two factors. So hopefully you learned something new today with that. If not, that's okay too. <laughs> All right, so example three. The first four prime numbers are two, three, five, and seven, as we saw a couple slides ago. What are the next four prime numbers? Now in our classroom, we have a chart but thankfully we're watching this at home where we don't have the cheat sheet. So let's try to think it through because I want you to try recognizing a prime number without just looking at a chart. So they, they took the easy ones. So let's go from seven and kind of just cancel out and, and figure it out as we go. Eight can't be prime because it's divisible by two. So that means two is a factor and that wouldn't work. Nine can't be because it's three times three. 10 is even, doesn't work. 11. Does anything go into 11 evenly? No, except for 1 and 11. So 11 is a prime number. 12 wouldn't work because that's even, so 2 is a factor. 13, does anything go into 13 other than 1 times 13? 2 doesn't, 3 doesn't, 4 doesn't, 5, no, 6, 7, no. So 13 is prime. 14 is even, doesn't work. 15 divides by 3 and 5. Um, 16 is even, no, 17. I'm thinking it through. Well, it's not two, doesn't go into it. Three doesn't, four doesn't, five doesn't, six doesn't, seven doesn't, eight doesn't. Sounds like I'm saying dozen, but I'm saying doesn't. So yeah, 17 has no other factors besides one and 17. So 17 is prime. 18 is even, so that's all automatically out. And 19. So I think 19 is the next one because I can't think of anything that goes into 19 except for 1 times 19. So there's your next four prime numbers, 11, 13, 17, and 19, all done through brain power and not by just looking at a chart. So that's really cool. Hopefully you were able to identify that too. Bonus, can you come up with the next one after 19? Write it here on the line and... Uh, you're not getting extra credit, sorry, but it's just a bonus if you can come up with the next one after 19 without having to peek at the chart on the wall. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the practice set. Um, please try these on your own. And letters E and F are tricky. If you have trouble with them, we'll go over them in class. Just give it a try. Read this paragraph and try it. That's all I ask, and hopefully A, B, C, and D will be a little bit easier, but E and F I anticipate you might have some difficulty with. Again, we'll go through them in class. Just try your best. Okay, everybody, thank you very much, and see you next time. Bye.